Okay, so what if I asked you to graph f of x equals the negative or opposite of the square root of x plus 2 plus 1. Okay, so the plus 2 is inside the square root and the plus 1 is on the outside. The negative is on the outside as well. So we have three different transformations of what parent function. So let's go back to our library of functions. So from our library of functions, we have to decide which function we're shifting around, right? Our function that we're graphing has a square root in it. So it must be that we're shifting around the square root function. Our square root function, look, has a key point at 0, 0, 1, the square root is 1, and the other one that's easy is 4. So the square root of 4 is 2. So we're going to use the key points 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2, and we're going to move those around. We're going to have three transformations this time. Okay, so we're going to use the parent function y equals the square root of x. Okay, so our new function has three variations here. We have the negation out front, we have adding two under the square root, and we have adding one outside of the square root. The only one that's gonna affect the x coordinate is this one that's the inner part of the function. And remember, when you add or subtract to the x, um, you're going to add or subtract the opposite actually of what you see here to the x coordinate. So in this case, we're gonna subtract two from each x coordinate. And what effect does that have when you subtract two from each x coordinate? We're gonna shift horizontally to the left. Okay, so that's one of the changes. Another change, which is an, on the outer part of the function, so it affects the y coordinate, is we're gonna add one to each y coordinate. And when we do that, it has the effect of shifting vertically upward one unit. And then over here, the negation again is on the outer part of the function. And so it's going to negate um, the y coordinate. So we're gonna take the opposite of y. Replace each y with negative y, in other words. What happens when you replace y with negative y? You're going to reflect vertically, right? Reflection. Okay, so out of our list, we have a horizontal shift. Okay, that's where we subtract two from each x. We have a vertical shift. That's not down until the fourth step. This is where we're going to add one to each y. And then we have a reflection happens to be a vertical reflection, which we're replacing each y with its opposite. Okay, so we have to do this in this order to guarantee that we get the right graph in the end. Let's see, first actually, I'm gonna start with my key points from square root. Remember we had zero, zero, we had one, one, and we had four, two. We already know the original graph Starts at zero, zero, one, one, four, two. Looks like a half of a parabola going off into the right. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to subtract two from each x, or in other words, shift uh, to the left horizontally. So the new points that I'm going to label on my, this first phase of my, of my transformation is gonna be negative two, zero, negative one, one, and two, two, subtracting two from each x coordinate. All right, so the first phase of my transformation, the first phase of my transformation, we're going to plot negative two, zero, negative one, one, and two, two. All right, so we did our horizontal shift to the left. The next thing we need to do is any, uh, is the reflection. There, we would have done stretching or shrinking if there was any, but there's not. So now we're gonna do the reflecting so remember what kind of reflection we had here? It was a vertical reflection because the negatives outside of the function, outside of the square root. We're replacing every y with its opposite. Now, negative two, zero, that guy, the opposite of zero is still zero. So for that one, we're just gonna have negative two, zero again. That one's not gonna move. But negative one, one is instead going to become negative one, negative one and two, two is gonna become two, negative two, replacing each y with 
its opposite. So we still have negative 2, 0 there, but we're moving to negative 1, negative 1, and 2, negative 2. Okay, so that has the effect of reflecting that function over the y-axis, and it looks like this now. All right, but we still need to do the last phase, which is what I highlighted in blue up there, the adding the 1. The adding the 1 to every y is a vertical shift. That's the fourth step in our uh, order of transformations there. And we have to add 1 to every y coordinate. So if we add 1 to each y, let's see what we get. We're going to get negative 2, 1. For this point, it's going to go to negative 1, 0. And this point is going to go to 2, negative 1 shifting each point up one. You can just do that on the graph if you want to, but I find a lot of people like to do the arithmetic way, so I like to do it that way too. So shifting up one from negative two, zero, we're gonna be at negative two, one. Shifting up one from negative one, positive one, puts us at negative one, zero. Negative one, zero is about there. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, negative one, zero, and then um, negative 2, negative 2 moves up to negative 2, negative 1. This is the same as this green graph, but shifted up one unit. So it still has the same shape, just shifted up. All right, so this is our actual function, f of x equals negative square root. And then now we've added the 1 to it. So we have our, we've done all three of the transformations. So the graph in black there is our final graph. Now, suppose you're a little unsure, maybe I didn't get my order right, you know, you're working it on the test and you're not sure if you got the order right. Remember, you can always plug in these last points and see if you actually, if they satisfy the function. So these points here should satisfy this function. So if you plug in each of the x coordinates, you should get the right y coordinate out. So let's see. So we have f of, for example, negative 2. If I plug that in, we're going to have negative 2 plus 2 plus 1. So that's going to be 0 plus 1 is 1. And you can see we did have 1 was our y value, so that's good. And let's plug in the next x, which was negative 1. So that would give us negative of negative 1 plus 2 plus 1. So that's going to be the opposite of square root of 1 plus 1. This is going to give us 0, which is what we had here. Okay, and then lastly, 2 negative 1 is supposed to be on there. So plugging in 2, we should get negative 1. Do we? Let's see. Negative square root 2 plus 2 plus 1. It's going to be the opposite of the square root of 4. So negative 2 plus 1, which gives us negative 1, just like we were supposed to have. Okay, so it looks like that we did our order of our transformations correctly, and that actually is the shape of the function. So I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, please remember to like it.